my name is Katie White. Um, I am the head of HR at um, Usborne Publishing, and um, it's been my job in the last couple of years that I've been working with Usborne um, to really help create an environment where all of our staff are able to enjoy working, have got all the tools that they need to do their job, um, and that we have the right people in-house to do the jobs that we need. Um, what I'm going to do over the next hour and a half is host some of my colleagues to talk about their different departments, um, give you an overview of Usborne Publishing and um, those individual members of staff, which you'll hear from, um, will also talk a little bit about their backgrounds, how they got into publishing and actually what their job entails. Um, what I'll do then is wrap at the end um, and talk a little bit about how you might think about getting into publishing, some of the routes to do that, and some top tips that um, we've learned along the way that might also help you get into that as a um, career. Hi everyone, um, so my name's Safana and I work in the UK sales team. Um, like a lot of others that you've met today, I also studied English, but without any intention whatsoever of becoming a writer. I did it just because I loved reading and I felt a bit clueless at 17, 18 about what to do. Um, I was also watching a lot of people in my community studying to become doctors and dentists and teachers and accountants, and I knew that wasn't for me. Um, and yet I think my parents have just about recovered from the trauma of me not doing one of those sensible careers. Um, since, seven, no, since I was 15, I've worked in retail um, and luckily enough, I managed to get lots of jobs in bookshops and um, that included a long stint at Waterstones. Um, and it was here that I ended up learning a lot about the publishing and book world. It was um, my bookshop manager actually at the time who pushed me to apply for jobs in publishing after I graduated. Um, I was really intimidated by the thought of publishing, if I'm honest, because I just didn't know anyone. That just wasn't what my family's background was. Um, but it was the skills and book knowledge I picked up while working in these bookshops that was absolutely my route into publishing. Um, so a bit about sort of what I did after that. So I got my first publishing job in 2008 um, at a company called Bounce in international sales. Um, there was a couple of other short-term publishing roles before I joined Osborne in 2010. And 11 years later, um, I'm still here. I'm now a senior sales manager responsible for sales to all our UK key accounts and generally overseeing the UK sales team. My sort of day-to-day -day job is to sell and negotiate with the likes of Waterstones and Tesco and Sainsbury's, et cetera. Um, and it's to make sure that Osborne books are stocked in really good numbers, that they're included in promotions and in marketing opportunities at these retailers and are basically as prominent as they can be to obviously encourage, you know, maximize sales. I also get involved in publishing decisions. So whether that's addressing um, the best publication date for a book, whether that's providing book cover feedback to the designers, um, or e even occasionally it's coming up with new ideas for books based on spotting um, a trend or um, a gap in the marketplace. So that's just in a nutshell, like sort of what I do. Um, and just moving on to my colleague, Natalie. So, hello, my name is Natalie. Um, I work in the export sales team um, and I went to university and studied American literature um, and my degree was split between a UK and an American uh, university. So um, whilst I was in America, I got to live that traditional American college lifestyle, which was um, definitely an experience. Um, but I went to uni planning to become a teacher um, and whilst I was prepping for my transition to going over to the States, all of my friends in the UK were prepping to um, apply for their P PGCEs and in that whole process I was watching them and I definitely decided that teaching was not for me. Um, so when I came back from America, um, I was talking to my dissertation advisor and um, he was asking me what I was doing after I graduated. And I was like, I have no idea what I want to do. And so he asked me what I liked doing. And my response reading uh, was enough for him to suggest I look into journalism or publishing. Um, and the more I looked into publishing, the more I decided that that was definitely what I wanted to do. But I, like many of us, had no idea what 
the uh, intricacies of publishing were. I didn't know what area I wanted to get into. So whilst I was applying for jobs um, leading up to my graduation, I was just applying for everything. Um, and thankfully landed a job as a PA in the children's sales team at uh, Random House, which is now Penguin Random House. Um, but I had zero publishing experience when I was applying. Um, but thankfully what I did have was office experience because during my final year of university, I was working at a technology company doing all sorts of random jobs there from tech support to sales, to debt collection, to general admin. So I had lots of kind of office experience before um, whilst I was applying for, um, for jobs in publishing. And it was that experience that helped me get my first role in publishing. Um, I stayed as an executive PA for three and a half years. Um, just a little bit of job advice. If you, um, if you ever need any help anywhere is make friends with the PAs because they know everything and they know how to get stuff done quickly and also roots around problems. Um, they are the fountain of all knowledge. Um, but I was a, so I was an executive PA for three and a half years before I moved over to the international sales team as a sales executive. And I, it was there that I completely fell in love with the idea of selling books and traveling. Um, so I decided that that was the area of publishing that I wanted to stay in. Um, and about four years ago, I moved over to um, Usborne. So I left Penguin Random House and came to Usborne as the senior sales executive. And within that role, I look after the English language sales into Europe, Latin America and the Caribbean. But my colleagues in, we've got 10 of us in our team, um, 11 if you include our director, and all of us work on different parts of the world. Um, some of us just work on the likes of Australia and New Zealand, others the US, Canada, other second language markets across the world. So um, we all have the different areas that we look after specifically. And within this role, it's very similar to what Afana does and what the UK sales team do, um, except um, I'm dealing with bookshops, museums, supermarkets and school suppliers in different countries. So I have to add in the added fun aspect of exporting, um, exporting goods and joining print runs and getting them delivered directly to my customers. Um, so that's a bit of an overview of what I do. But we're going to give you a bit of an overview of what a sales team technically does uh, within publishing. Um, I think one of the reasons our sales departments are so interesting is that we are one of the few departments that involve from start to finish. You get to see the books go from an idea to a real product. And then it's up to us to make sure it finds a home in all types of shops um, and be discovered and enjoyed by readers everywhere. Um, and when we do what we do really, really well, um, and the book becomes a bestseller, well, I think that part of the job is just so incredibly satisfying. Yeah, so um, how do we go about selling the books? Um, we present to our customers about nine to 12 months ahead of a publication date. Um, and this is usually done face to face. Um, and for the likes of export or international sales teams, this can also mean that we would be traveling abroad to see customers um, and, but obviously at the moment, it's not really possible to do that. So Zoom has very much become our best friend. Um, and, but what do we mean by customer? Um, book, our customers are book buyers. Um, they can be anything from um, the likes of a Waterstones buyer to a sales team at another publisher um, or a partner publisher. They could be someone that buys books for a museum. Um, it, very much varies but these book buyers are the gatekeepers to making a book successful their job is to decide <clears throat> which books to promote and also how to position them uh, in whatever kind of store that they're managing so um, each customer is very different from another and not every customer will take the whole published list um, because there's not enough space to do it so we have to narrow it down to what we think will sell best for them uh, for example, some customers might only take fiction books, so we will only show them fiction books. Um, if you're selling to an aquarium, you're most likely only going to be showing them books about fish. Um, so we have to customise um, for, um, for these uh, different, uh, different retailers. But then these buyers will place orders for the books and then we will use those orders to decide how many books with that we want to print and generally the bigger the order the better chance the book has of doing well. 
And so once the book is published, we don't forget about it. Whilst a lot of our job is to talk about new books, um, in the background, we are still selling all the other books on the Osborne list that may have published um, a long time ago. So we might, there's lots of ways we could do this. We might do it by creating a specific display in store. Um, it could be by submitting it for um, a promotion um, or on a specific theme. Um, it could be that we go through some of the older books and look at how we can reuse it or revitalize it. Um, or it could be as simple as you know, just doing price promotions um, to regenerate interest. So if any of you get those sort of daily deals from Amazon, um, I, th I think they come every day, putting it into a promotion like that, you know, a limited what, you know, three pound off or four pound off. That, that's another way that we'd um, uh, try and sell as many books as possible. We uh, also um, create exclusive products when requested by retailers. Um, Becky has already shown you the Gilded Ones, and as you can tell, this is a book we've all super excited about since it's featuring a few times now. But what this shows you is how one book can be sold in five different ways. Um, so yeah, these are different editions that we've done for different customers or different markets around the world. Katie, if we can skip ahead. Um, and I think we just wanted to end on sort of just showing you how many different sales departments that actually are within publishing. It's actually a, a huge area. So within the UK sales team alone, we have sort of a key accounts area, which is historically tends to be your bigger customers. Then you have territory sales, which is um, selling to literally everyone you can think of within a set geographical area. For example, we have someone whose job it is to sell only to customers based in London and Southeast. Um, and in normal pre-pandemic times, they'd be based outside the office and just traveling around, you know, pretty much every day. Um, then you also have special sales, which is selling to customers who aren't your traditional Waterstones and W.H. Smiths. Um, and often for special sales customers, you're creating completely exclusive or bespoke product. Um, one example of a special sales customer is someone like Costco. You also have um, online sales, which is obviously um, uh, the giant of the book, the book world, um, Amazon, and customers like the book depository. And then you also have um, digital and audio sales, which is um, the, the only department where they're selling a digital product rather than a physical product. Um, audio in particular is relatively new um, and it's still a really big growth area. And then the export or international sales teams pretty much do um, all of the UK roles, um, but just abroad um, and this is predominantly going to be done in English language um, so they do everything from the more traditional bookshops uh, and book chains to supermarkets um, but then also the non-traditional places where you wouldn't normally find uh, find a book um, and then also kind of throwing in schools as well because especially in second language um, countries where you'll have a lot of international schools, there will be that added, um, especially for us as a children's publisher, uh, there will be that added um, uh, added bonus of a customer that um, would be supplying to, to a school that might teach, teach in English. Um, and then there's a kind of a sister team to um, export and international, which is rights. And these, this team sells the foreign language or even English language rights to international publishers. Um, so very much like um, uh, Becky and Stephanie were saying earlier about us buying in rights from a US for a US book, we might acquire a, a book or even obviously publish our own books and we will then sell our rights to an international publisher. Um, so that's kind of what the rights team do and both international um, and export and rights, we tend to do a lot of traveling within our role as well. Um, so yes, that's the summary of those ones. And I guess just sort of just finally, I think there is probably a preconception about when people think of sales. I think for most people, you probably think of like sort of a car sales person maybe, um, but publishing sales is really not like that at all. Um, and I hope we've shown you that publishing sales is really varied um, and a really great area of publishing to work in. Thank you so much for listening. <laughs>